November draws to a close, we take time as a nation to celebrate Thanksgiving. It's a day in which, at least the tradition is, we gather together around tables that are filled with food. And then, uh, pretty quickly after the food is consumed, we, um, we prepare to, to consume even more in our shopping. On this Thanksgiving in 2020, Thanksgiving is going to look quite a bit different for many of us. I wonder if we might take this opportunity in this moment to offer our prayer and offer our thanksgiving to God. I want to invite you into just a few moments as November draws to a close. Just a few moments of prayer and thanksgiving. Hope and pray that you might use this opportunity to center yourself, to center your body, your mind, your soul, and to center around the, the love and grace that God has for us. To know that God in Jesus Christ gives himself for you, for me, for the world. On this Thanksgiving, I just want to invite you as we begin this time of worship to, um, to respond to each of these petitions with just those simple words, thank you. The world is filled with the glory of God and we say thank you. The hills and valleys are filled with color and we say thank you. The vines and the trees are filled with fruit, and we say, thank you. Our tables are overflowing with food, and we say, thank you. Our life is filled with love of family and friends, and we say, thank you. We fill this house of God with our voices saying, thank you. Oh God, now may the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you as we enter into this time of thanksgiving and praise. I invite you into these words, this litany of thanksgiving. Over and over and over again, we respond, the Lord be praised. Today we offer our thanksgiving and gratitude to the giver of all good and perfect gifts, the Lord be praised. For the tables we share, the bread we partake of within our communities, within our families, and within our homes, the Lord be praised. For the hands of friendship that have been extended to us and the grace we have received, the Lord be praised. For your continual provision in our lives, the Lord be praised. For the embrace of love, the Lord be praised. For your mercies that are new at dawn and sustain us through the day, echoing through the night, the Lord be praised. For the gift of your Son and his blood poured out, the Lord be praised. For the new life that beats within us now, the Lord be praised. And in all things we give you thanks and join with creation song. Great is the Lord and most worthy to be praised. The Lord be praised. 
A reading assigned to the day of Thanksgiving from the Gospel of Luke, the 17th chapter. In this 17th chapter, Jesus is speaking at the table with, um, uh, with the Pharisees, and he speaks of a Samaritan leper who becomes a model of Thanksgiving, who does not take for granted the kindness shown to him, but takes time to thank Jesus and to glorify God. Luke chapter 17, beginning in verse 11. On the way to Jerusalem. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Often this story of Jesus encountering ten lepers is used to guilt us into returning to God thanks and praise. Of the other nine, where are they? And often we turn this text into, um, into a lesson which, in all honesty, it compels us to give thanks. I, as a child, I received many gifts from my, from my family and, and extended family. At Christmases and at, and at birthdays, my, my godparents would send me gifts in the mail. And, and then after those celebrations were done and after the gifts were unwrapped, my mom, she would make me sit down at the kitchen table with some thank you notes. You got the gifts, and now it's time to write those thank you notes. In a lot of ways, it was a, a guilt trip that was laid upon me. Well, maybe you shouldn't use that gift if you don't want to write a thank you note for it. Maybe you shouldn't deposit that money that was given to you if you don't want to take the time to write a thank you note. I confess that I'm not so good at writing thank you notes now. It's something that I hope and pray to become better at. Just this last month, I had a, well, had a little bit of a gathering with some family and some friends outdoors to celebrate a, a birthday. There was a couple people that showed up at the same time, and there were a few people who brought some gifts. And, and what happened was a couple of the gifts, well, they, they got mixed up. And as I unwrapped a few... Bag, gift bags, um, I didn't keep track of what gift came from where. I was overwhelmed again by the generosity of friends and family. It was good to be together. That was the real gift. But I got a coffee cup from someone who showed up at the party, and, um, and I don't know who it was. Let me say to you now, uh, if it was you, if you're watching now and you haven't received a thank you note from me for the, um, uh, for the coffee cup that you gave to me, thank you. I really do appreciate it. It was, it was a kind gift. It was a thoughtful gift. I, I often am looking for, for a coffee cup. <laughs> and I feel bad for not returning thanks. Something was given and, and a response well, a response can and should come. Brings us to this heart of the matter on this Thanksgiving. 
of the gifts that God has given to us. The gift of life itself, the gift of your salvation, one for you in Jesus Christ. And how might we respond? We get concerned, I get concerned about writing individual thank you notes. It was something that was ingrained in me as a child. My, my mother would make me sit down and write thank you notes. It's a proper response for having received a gift. We respond with a word of thanks. And how much more can we think of this life and this day and this moment as a, a gift? A gift given to us by God himself. The gift of this day, the gift of, of this very breath. And maybe rather than missing individual thank you notes, that we might do well to live our whole life, our whole life in thanksgiving. Our whole life in thanksgiving to others, and our whole life in thanksgiving to God. For what God has given to us. What does he do to the lepers? He, he returns them to their place in society. They, they were shunned. They were kept apart. Now they're given life itself. Not life separated by their guilt or by their shame. But, but life that's in which they're included into the, into the community in which they lived. In our thanksgiving, we have the opportunity this day to return to God what God has given to us, our selves, our time, and, and our possessions. May the Lord be praised. Thanks be to God for this incredible gift of this life and this day, and the gift of our salvation and this very breath that we take. Amen. Thanks be to God, and happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>
Friends, we enter into these moments of prayer and thanksgiving. At the end of each petition, I would invite you to respond, Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church and the world and all in need. Gracious God, you send from your abundance the people, talents, and resources needed for all the ministries of your church. We give thanks for the work you have accomplished through your people, and we pray for your continued blessings on our ministries together. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Bountiful God, you feed us through the richness of the land, water, sunlight, and ample crops. Bless all those who cultivate the land to bring forth its bounty, especially farmers and migrant workers. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Merciful God, you order our lives by your providence. We give you thanks for laws, infrastructure, and leadership that structure and support our human endeavors. Align our purposes with your own that all of our undertakings might bring you glory. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you open our hearts in compassion for one another. We give you thanks for the care and healing received through the hands and feet of your servants. Send us to love those in need of your mercy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Hospitable God, you connect and strengthen us through meals and conversations with family and friends. In this time of Thanksgiving, steer us from passive uh, receiving to active response, from old quarrels to reconciliation, and from overconsumption to true gratitude. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for the love and care we have received from saints who have gone before us. By their example, enrich the generosity of our witness to others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Good friends, on this Thanksgiving, receive this word of blessing. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and who calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. May the blessing of God, the Sovereign, the Savior, and the Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.